Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at VLANs in a multi switched environment. We'll be discussing defining VLAN trunks, networks without VLANs, networks with VLANs, VLAN identification with a tag, native VLANs and 802.1Q tagging, and finally, voice VLAN tagging. This episode is part of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. As we talk about these VLANs, we need to talk about how do we pass this information around our network? What we, we have here is we create these VLAN trunks, these trunk connections. If we look at our diagram here, we have switch two on the left side right here. Switch two has PC one connected in it. That's in its own VLAN, VLAN 10. PC two is connected into switch two also. That has its own special VLAN, VLAN 20. PC three is connected in. That has its own VLAN, VLAN 30. Each one of these PCs has its own VLAN. Each one of these connections between the PC and the switch, this is handles only one VLAN worth of information. This is an access port on the switch that we're connected into. And it that, that port filters out the information for the correct VLAN and sends that across there. Because it's only one VLAN worth of information, we don't have to tag that information. And we're, we're not gonna have a whole lot of congestion there. But to get this information from all three of these VLANs, from switch two to switch one to switch three, we have to have special connections in here. And so the connection between switch one and switch two, this is where we have our trunk. Unlike the connections that go between the PC and the switch that only handle one VLAN information, this single connection, this trunk, handles all VLANs worth of information. And in our example here, this trunk would have VLAN information for 10, 20, and 30 going across there. All VLANs would transfer across there. Same thing with the connection between switch one, switch three here. This is a trunk also, and it'll handle all three VLANs worth of information going across there. The switch will get it, and then according to how that switch is configured, it'll send out VLAN worth or VLAN 10 only information to PC4, only VLAN 20 information to PC5, and only VLAN information 30 to PC6. And these are access ports here, only sending out one VLAN worth of information. And the trunk port here sends out all VLANs worth of information. By default, a trunk handles all VLANs going across there it, by default. But what you can do is you can, you can allow only certain number of ports or certain certain number of VLANs to go across there. Maybe you only want 10 and 20 to go across there. And so what you do is you allow 10 and 20, but then you don't allow 30. And not allowing 30 basically denies 30 from going across that, that trunk connection. The protocol we're talking about here is 802.1Q trunking. This is the protocol that puts that tagging in that header information to identify what VLAN it, it, it's connected to. And trunk, uh, the 802.1Q refers to the trunking. This, this trunk connection here, that's the protocol we're using. And that puts in that into that header, that tag for that VLAN field that identifies which VLAN it's going across. Even though we have many different VLANs going across here, we can then look at that header, look at that tag and say, oh, this is VLAN 10 information. If your network doesn't use VLANs, we have a couple issues here. PC1 here sends out a broadcast. That broadcast travels down to switch two. Switch two, once again, remember what, what a switch does with broadcast, it sends it out all other connected ports except for the one it, it, it received it on. It sends it out port 18 to PC2, sends it out to port six to PC3, and then it also forwards it out port F1 here to switch one. 
it sends that broadcast out. Well, switch one gets that broadcast in, forwards it out all ports, except for the one it sends it on, so it forwards it out ports three, goes to switch three here, and then it sends it out again to all the other ports besides the one that received it in. And so that broadcast goes all the way across the network. All the device gets all, all that extra traffic and it increases the congestion and uses up bandwidth on your network. If you wanted to, say, segment off the faculty computers, PC1 and PC3, what you would have to do here is get three more switches in each of these locations. You would run PC1 into that switch, then that switch to the middle switch, then to the right switch, and then PC4, taking out these connections here. You would all of a sudden have to double your equipment if you add in, if you wanted to segment that traffic off. You want to segment off the guest network down here, you need to add in another three switches down here. Just think of that cost as it goes up and adding in every VLAN, or sorry, every LAN that you want to segment off, keep that traffic separate. You need another set of equipment if you're not using virtual LANs. When we use VLANs on our networks, what that does is it creates those virtual LANs. And you can think of it almost as a virtual switch where we take a part of our switch and we segment it off for one of these local area networks. And we can plug our PCs into part of that switch, into that virtual LAN, into those ports that we've segmented off to be part of a specific LAN. And then we can do that on the other end. And then when we send a broadcast from PC1, it goes to the switch one. Because PC2 is on a different VLAN, it doesn't send it out there, but it sends it across the trunk to switch one, then the switch one forwards it across the trunk to switch three, and it only sends it out to PC4 because it is on the same VLAN, VLAN 10. PC5 doesn't get it, PC5 is on VLAN 20, does not forward that out there. If you're using VLANs, PC1, VLAN 10 can't talk to VLAN 20. The way you have to do that is you have to introduce some sort of layer three device. Typically this is a router here at layer three. And that router can change the VLAN tag. It can identify what network it came from, what network it's going to based upon what network it's going to. We can change that 802.1Q header information, that 802.1Q tag to the appropriate VLAN and we can change VLANs at that point in time. If you like this episode on VLANs in a multi-switched environment and you get value out of it and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Here we have our layer two frame. That is this brownish line up here, the top line. We have our destination MAC address, our source MAC address, we have our type length, we have our data, then we have our frame check sequence. Once again, frame check sequence uses the CRC, cyclic redundancy check algorithm. It, it takes in all the information before it, runs it through the algorithm, gets a number, puts that number in this field, and then we store that. And then when the next device gets that in, it, it comes through, it looks at all the data, it calculates its own CRC, and then it compares it to this one. If it match matches, it forwards the frame on. If it doesn't match, it deletes the frame. Layer two, once again, is responsible for error detection, not error correction. Error correction happens at the higher layer. If we're using the 802.1Q process here of tagging for our VLANs, what happens is we take our normal frame and in between the source MAC address and the type length, we put a tag. This tag goes right in there. When we insert this tag, we have to recalculate the frame check sequence. So we have to recalculate it. Now, this is when it goes across a trunk connection. We insert this tag. 
When we insert this tag, that's when we have to check the frame check sequence. This header here is four bytes long in here. There are four fields here. The first one is the type. It's a two byte field and it's referred to as the tag protocol ID. It identifies what type of tag, what type of information we have. Then we have the user priority field. The user priority field, uh, basically you can think of this almost as a quality of service. How fast do we want to get this through here? We the next field here is the CFI, the conical format identifier. And it's a one bit field here that can support token ring frames on ethernet. And then the last one is the VLAN ID. It's a 12 bit number and it identifies what VLAN it belongs to because it's 12 bits. Take that 12 bits from binary into decimal. It will support up to 4,096 VLANs. You can have over 4,000 VLANs on your device. In a practical environment, I've never seen anybody typically go over 50. Once in a while, you'll see somebody go over 50 in a big production environment with thousands and thousands of users. But for the most part, a lot of companies have five to 10, maybe even 20 VLANs and that's it. For an 802.1 Q trunk, tagging is typically done on all VLANs. The use of the VLAN here was designed for legacy legacy devices. Either your NIC, your network interface, doesn't support 802.1Q and VLAN tagging, or maybe you came through a device like a hub. A hub does not support VLAN tagging, and that information that enters your network, either through a legacy device or through a hub, is not tagged. So we, we don't know what VLAN to put it in. This is where that native VLAN comes in. Unless change that native VLAN is VLAN 1, and a, and a good recommendation is make sure you always change the native VLAN to something else. And then the other thing to understand is both ends of the trunk must have the same v, native VLAN. When you go in and you configure it, one end of the trunk here, if you set the native VLAN, the native VLAN here, to 10, and the other end of the connection is still on native VLAN one down there, you're going to get a, a mismatch, a VLAN ID mismatch error. And until you go down here and change it to VLAN 10. The voice VLAN is a special VLAN and there's special things that happen here when you use Cisco devices with the voice over, voice over IP VLANs here. Now, when you connect a, a voice over IP phone in, normally the phone here has a three port switch in it. One, one port goes to the switch. So we got one connection into the switch, one into the phone itself. A lot of times you don't see this port because it's all built in. And then the third port is you connect your PC into it. What this allows you to do is have two devices, but only one connection going into your switch. Only one connection ran to that desk location in the office. When you plug that phone into the switch, the phone will use the Cisco D Discovery Protocol, CDP, and that switch will inform the phone about the voice VLAN. The switch uses CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, to identify that it's a phone connected in, and then the switch sends the phone information about the voice VLAN. The phone will then tag its own traffic with the correct VLAN, and so when it hits the switch, we can process that correctly. And then it can also set the cost of service, the COS. What the COS is, is the layer two equivalent quality of service there for layer two. Once again, giving priority to certain traffic. Now, the phone may or may not tag information from the PC. It depends how you set up your system. After you do your voice configuration on your switch for the particular port you're, you're, you're looking at, we can go through and 
verify our VLAN information. The command here we're going to use is show interfaces. We're going to specify what port we're looking at. So we're looking at fast Ethernet 0 slash 18 here, and then we'll put the keyword switch port because we want all the switch port information. As we can look through here, we can see that the name of the port, we can see that it's enabled, we can see different information until we get down to here. The access mode VLAN for fast Ethernet 0 18 here is VLAN 20. So we set this up to VLAN 20. We called that VLAN 20 the student VLAN and the voice is VLAN here is the 150 VLAN. You've set that all up. Now, typically each port can only belong to one VLAN at a time, but it can belong to a data VLAN and a voice VLAN. It can belong to the second one if that is a voice VLAN. A port, an access port only can belong to one VLAN. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on VLANs in a multi-switched environment. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. And you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. Once again, I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.